our Torah reading presents God's first words to Avram. As I noted, first words, first memories are often a distillation of what will yet unfold or foreshadowing of a life yet to become more complete. What I'd like to do to enable both a short tur Devar Torah is a bit of an imagining of Abraham looking back at this call, these first words, and what he might say to us, Abraham, if he was to address us. I was already 75 years old when I heard God's voice. My wife, Sarai, and I had no children of our own. I was living in Haran, the place that my father had brought me along with my nephew. Remarkably, my father had left Ur Kasdim with me, with Sarai, intending to go to the land of Canaan, but we never got there. We stopped in Haran, and there we were year after year. Somehow, I felt stuck not only stuck in terms of in the back of my mind an uncompleted journey, but stuck in terms of my beloved Sarai and I, no children. And then deep within me I heard these words, Lech lecha, you shall surely go. Me artzecha, from your land, umimoladecha, from the place you were born. Those places I had left long ago. And then I heard more. Umi Beit Avicha, your father's home. This was my call to leave my immediate family. It was hard to leave my father, to leave my nephew with my brother Nahor having yet taken responsibility for my father. And yet there was more. El Ha'arit Sarsher Ar Eka, to the land that I will show you. You see, this was a journey of uncertainty. And now I look out at all of you. Those were the first words that I received as a call and you somehow continue to hear those words. Somehow each of you are part of a chain from that moment. And then I heard more. The Agadla et Shemecha. I will make your name great. And indeed, Abraham and Sarah are names I understand that Abraham Lincoln was a great American president. Abraham, my name, across time and generations. It's quite remarkable. I would have never imagined. And God said, I will give you success, not just financial success, which I had in my day, many herds, but ve heye bracha, and you shall be a blessing. I didn't know what that means. And then it said, those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you, I will curse. And indeed, from that moment till now, there have been a hundred generations of my seed. There's about a hundred people here. Think of that as we're linked, arm in arm. We each represent an entire generation of people reaching this moment. And indeed, history has shown that as difficult as it has been for my progeny to remain 
part of a Jewish people. Those who blessed the Jewish people were indeed blessed, and those who cursed the Jewish people were indeed cursed. And then there's this last piece of the seven clauses of God's words. And they will be blessed through you, all the nations of the earth. And when I heard it, I didn't know. Was that a reward or a duty? When it says that all people will be blessed through you, my descendants, is it your reward or is it your duty, your responsibility? And clearly it is both. We are so small, you are so small in numbers. Point two of a percentage of the world. An accountant's error that would not be worthy of a lawsuit <laughs> in the accounting of the peoples of the world. And yet, my progeny have made an enormous impact. But more, it's a responsibility to be, as Isaiah said, or la goyim, a light to the nations. For indeed, you, my descendants, are not a tribe alone. We are not a clan alone. We are a people who heard and hear God's voice. Ribbona Shalom, master of the universe. Across time, the words to Abraham echo as a call not just to him, but to all his progeny over a hundred plus generations of whom we are now the heirs and more the ancestors for those who will follow us. May we indeed feel that uh, the goodness in our life is a gift, but more, may we see ourselves hearing God's voice to be rewarded as a blessing, but more, to be a blessing on behalf of God to others. Amen. <laughs>